I had always planned on doing this video, but I had assumed that it would be a long time from now. However, when you guys asked for this video in the comments on my Ruby Rose video, I took it as a sign and started this video right away. My first stop when analyzing Maka was the anime, and from the very first episode... Halloween cannon! I could just tell that this was going to be a very fun character to analyze. Hello internet, Jojo here, and welcome to Idea Shock. And today, we got a video on Maka Albarn. Because you guys, well, at least one of you, asked for it. So... What can I say except you're welcome? And that's all of that song that I will play because I don't want to anger the corporate juggernaut known as Disney. Don't you know who I am? Anyway, before we get into this, let's just have full disclosure. I haven't actually finished the anime, but I did read the manga, and, you know, the source material is the most important. Just so all you anime onlys out there know, in the manga, the final fight takes place on the moon. I'm telling you this because the anime adaptation is drastically different than the manga. But enough with the stalling, let's talk about the resident scythe meister at the DWMA, Maka Albarn. Somewhere in the US state of Nevada, it may or may not be Area 51, there is a school where special people go to become warriors and to hunt the evil witches and Kishans. These students are divided into groups of two. In each of these teams, there is one student who has the ability to transform and become a literal human weapon, while the other individual, the Meister, wields them. These students are all part of the school known as the Death Weapon Meister Academy, but you can just call it the DWMA for short. The DWMA was founded by the Grim Reaper himself with the express purpose of hunting Kishans. Kishans are humans who have been corrupted by their lust for power and the decision they made to devour human souls in search of it. The Web and Meister pair of Maka Albarn and Soul Evans Eater are some of the top ranked students in the entirety of the DWMA. At the start of the story, they only wanted to graduate by transforming Soul into a Death Scythe. A Death Scythe is the personal weapon of the Grim Reaper himself, and every student wants to create one. However, life is rarely simple and it's almost never easy. After several encounters with the Witch Medusa, Maka and Sol found themselves on the front lines of a three-way war between the DWMA, the Witches, and the quintessential personification of madness itself, the Kishin Ashura. This was no ordinary war. This war was to decide the fate of the Earth itself. But unlike most other wars, this war was not one of physical danger. Instead, this war was over the very sanity of the entire human race. If they were to lose this war, the world would be plunged into a permanent and endless madness. Maka is not quite on the level as the powerhouse known as Black Star, but she does have several very impressive feats of strength. Super early in the series, Maka fights the phantom monk Rasputin. None of that, none of that. Rasputin states that even bullets can't hurt him. Now at this point in the series, the only guns that we have seen are the Mafia's Tommy guns. Typically, a M1 Tommy gun fires a bullet that has a muzzle velocity of 920 feet per second. Using the barrel of this gun, and using the time it takes for the bullet to travel that distance, we can find a bullet acceleration of about 188,000 meters per second squared. Now, assuming for a 15 gram bullet, we can discover that this bullet would hit with about 634.6 pounds of force. Because Maka was able to cut Rasputin in half, she would need to produce considerably more than that. I like it. I know, that's great, right? Another! Another good feat of power is towards the end of the last arc of the story. In Maka's last confrontation with Krona, she hit him so hard he slammed into the ground and broke the lunar rocks beneath him. According to the American Geophysical Union, Moon Rock averages to have a tensile strength of about 123 megapascals. A general rule to find the shear strength of a material is to multiply the tensile strength by 0.577. Don't 
Doing that, the sheer strength of moon rock comes out to be 71 megapascals, which is almost two times stronger than granite at an average strength of 32 megapascals. 71 megapascals translates to about 10,000 pounds of force per square inch. To find the total force that Maka is producing, we can look at the surface area of the object that is in contact with the ground, also known as Krona's back and head. Krona is incredibly small. Somebody get that kid a sandwich. So, assuming that Krona has a similar weight to Christian Bale did when he played in The Machinist, 110 pounds, a child of this size would have an anterior head and anterior torso surface area of about 616 square inches. Applying this surface area to the sheer strength of lunar rock, we can find that Maka had to deal over 3,000 tons of force. This is actually not quite as much of an outlier as you might think. One of Maka's fellow students, Blackstar, actually caught a good chunk of moon rock that was falling on top of him, and a different student, Kid, can become death himself. So, yeah. While this is incredibly impressive, she can unleash even more power with her soul resonance. One of the most important skills that any weapon and Meister can have is good soul resonance. Soul resonance is what happens when Maka and Soul match their soul wavelengths. When they match their wavelengths, this resonance ability is called, well, actually she has several different names for it, but the two most important ones are Witch Hunt and what it was called after Soul became a Death Scythe, Warlock Hunter. All of these abilities do basically the same thing, but just differ in power. When Maka fought this mosquito person, not that mosquito person, the other mosquito person, that's the ticket, anyway, Maka hit him with Witch Hunter hard enough that his impact force was enough to break the tiles that he landed on. Using the length of Blackstar's arm here, and then comparing it to the tiles, we can find that the total surface area that was destroyed is about 35,000 square inches. Applying this to the depth of the crater, and we can find that the total volume that was destroyed is 2,500,000 cubic centimeters. As you might assume, these tiles are most likely not granite or limestone, so instead of finding the data on the raw material that they're made of, we can go straight to the source. According to the brick industry, molded clay tiles have a compressive strength of 36.5 megapascals, applying a shear factor of 0.577, and we can find that for Maka to destroy this much tile, she would need to have produced 38 million joules or 38 megajoules of energy. However, this is only with Witch Hunter. After a small time skip, Maka used her Warlock Hunter to cut through an attack that could destroy several mountains. Taking the size of the hole in this mountain and applying the compressive strength of granite, we can find it had to be worth, at minimum, 22 tons of TNT. And while using Warlock Hunter, Maka was able to cut this attack in half. However, this is a weird feat but it is evidence to suggest that Warlock Hunter is capable of dealing near, if not far greater energy than that attack. Not only does Warlock Hunter appear to be very powerful, it also appears to be able to cut through any attack that's less energy output than its own energy. In the very first chapter of the manga, Maka and Sol are hunting the witch Blair. Yes, her name's Blair, and they thought she was a witch. They weren't very subtle. Among the first several times that they tried to fight her, Blair hit them with her pumpkin cannon. In the anime it's shown to be nuclear, but that's the anime, and anime's weird. Now in the manga, the source material, it's not clear exactly how powerful this is, but we do get a good look at it much later in chapter 78. Blair uses this attack to completely vaporize a succubus. If you're wondering why Blair in this panel is a dude, Basically, they were inside a book where each chapter represented one of the seven deadly sins. The chapter that they were in was lust, so all the genders of all the characters were swapped. Yeah, have fun internet. Anyway, the energy necessary to vaporize an average-sized human is about 2.99 gigajoules. But considering... Let's round up to 3 gigajoules. This means that in the very first chapter of Soul Eater, Maka took 0.7 of a ton of TNT and was totally fine. In a later chapter, while having a dispute, Maka punched Blackstar in the face. After they got unmanned at each other, Maka had Blackstar hit her to make up for her hitting him. Of course, Blackstar obliged. He hit her so hard that Maka bounced between several walls. It's difficult to get a good estimate of this attack, but we do know that only a few chapters after this, Blackstar picks a fight with Kid by breaking a spike and thus destroying the symmetry of the DWMA. 
Using Black Star's arm here, we can find that the diameter of the break is about 20 inches, and the cross-sectional area would be about 300 inches squared. Using Marvel's shear strength of 8.655 megapascals, as stated by the Jackson School of Geoscience, we can find that Black Star must have punched this spike with almost 200 tons of force. So logically, this means Maka had to have taken a hit of similar power. After all, Black Star said that he wasn't going to hold back. However, all the durability feats that we've talked about so far are only up to 33 chapters in the story. During the final arc, Maka and Blackstar can go toe to toe with the Kishin Ashura. The Kishin hits Maka so hard that he makes a massive crater. This crater appears to be about 150 inches in diameter and about 21.5 inches in depth. Using the same lunar rock numbers before, we can find that the result of this particular attack comes out to 442 megajoules of energy. Because this is an anime and manga, it doesn't stop there. At the very beginning of the fight, Ashura fires a blast of what we will later discover to be nuclear energy. With the width of the moon tooth of this panel, we can find that the radius of this explosion is about 3,770 inches wide. An explosion of this size would be worth around 2 kilotons of TNT. While it appears that the three students were able to avoid taking the majority of the blast, they can't avoid the thermal or nuclear radiation. According to AtomicArchives.com, half of the energy of a nuclear bomb are these types of energy. This means that the students should have taken about one kiloton of TNT. Now, considering how close they are and dividing the energy equally between them, we can assume that Maka took about 333 tons of TNT and was fine. Now, this is the total energy released in this attack, and obviously they didn't get hit by all of it, but they were still in the direct path of the blast. But that's not all, folks. One of my favorite feats in the entire story is when the Kishin Ashram broke Black Star's arms. For reference, before the Kishin broke Black Star's arms, Black Star had caught one of the moon's teeth as it was falling. Using Krona as our ruler in this panel, the density of moon rocks, and taking the distance the tooth fell into account, we can find that Black Star's forearms can take at least 16,000 tons of compressive force. Comparing the compressive strength to the sheer strength of bone, we can find that the force required for Ashra to break Black Star's bones is around 8,000 tons of force. This means that Maka has taken similar damage from Ashra. All of this is without the Black Blood defending her. The Black Blood was developed by the witch Medusa to strengthen her daughter, son, child. In both the anime and the manga, it's kept very ambiguous, but, you know, anime is weird. Now, although the Black Blood was designed with ill intent in mind, it's actually not inherently evil. Medusa herself even stated that the Black Blood is not much different than normal red blood. It can even be affected by medication and simple herbs. Of course, this blood also has its drawbacks, but when mastered, the blood can be pulled out of the bloodstream and formed into an external armor. The strength of the armor itself is unknown, but Maka was able to take several hits from the Kishin Ashura without much issue. We can find the minimum strength of the Black Blood by taking a look at Black Star. After the time skip, Black Star fought Krona. During this fight, Black Star was able to crack the Black Blood with only a punch. Before the time skip, Black Star had been able to do this to a cliff. Using some low estimates, we can find that Black Star would need about 18 tons of TNT to do this to the cliff. This means that the Black Blood's minimum durability is about 18 tons. By this point, you've probably realized that you need to like this video and subscribe to this channel. If you've not realized that, then allow me to tell you. You need to like this video and subscribe to this channel. Now, if you want me to give the same treatment that I'm giving to Maka to another character, leave a comment down below telling me who they are and what media they're from. Maybe like a One Punch Man character or a Matrix character, or just whoever you want me to analyze. Also, I'm currently doing a series on Superman, so if you're a DC Comics fan, check it out. Or if you're a Marvel fan, check it out and see the competition. Cool? Okay. Maka's greatest feat of speed is actually in the very first chapter. During the fight with Blair, Sol basically runs a con on her so that he can angle his blade around her. Once he does this, Maka covers the distance, grabs the handle of the scythe, and cuts Blair faster than she could even react. Using Sol's shoe, or his soul, Get it? Because shoes have soles? Stop it. Get some help. Okay. The distance between Blair and Maka is about 83 feet. 
The only significant numbers that I could find stated that a cat can react about 5 times faster than a human can. A typical human can see and react in about a quarter of a second. This means that Blair should be able to react in 0.05 of a second. And this might actually be rather slow, as Blair has a lot of magical power. So, using these numbers, we can find that for Maka to cover this distance before Blair could react, she would need to move at 1137 miles per hour, or almost one and a half times the speed of sound. The thing is, the majority of Maka's speed feats are very early in the series. However, at her peak, Maka should be comparable to the other two main students, Black Star and Death the Kid. Death the Kid has been shown to be able to move faster than Akishin could see. In these panels, we can see that he moved 120 feet in what we can assume to be 0 .0045 of a second. We can then find that he had to be moving at 18,250 miles per hour. And this was only in chapter 13 of the manga. By the end of the 113 chapter story, we can assume that Maka is definitely able to reach this speed. Like I mentioned before, the Black Blood was made by Medusa, but it's not much different than regular blood. However, Maka does not use this blood in the same way that other characters do. Maka and Sol almost exclusively use it as an armor. This is probably due to the fact that the one time they did attempt to use it like Corona, they almost went insane. Needless to say, they didn't really do that again. Now, the Black Blood itself actually does not stay inside Maka at all times. The Black Blood only resides in Sol, but it temporarily spreads to Maka when the two souls are resonating, but once they stop resonating, the blood turns back to normal. Some of the abilities that the Black Blood grants is the ability to heal almost instantly from wounds. There are almost no wounds that can't be healed. Wounds like getting stabbed in the head or impaled to the chest. Both of these injuries were healed by the Black Blood in only a few seconds. It is very possible that as long as Sol and her are resonating, Maka can heal from basically any wound and thus making her almost impossible to kill. Sol is one of the rare humans who can physically become a weapon. These few people actually have a physical weapon inside their body. The spin-off series Soul Eater Not expands on this by explaining that the weapon can actually set off airport metal detectors. When fighting, Soul almost exclusively transforms his arm into a blade, but he has been shown to transform other limbs. In terms of combat ability, Soul has not successfully fought and beat any opponent by himself. However, all students at Death Weapon Meister Academy are trained in martial arts and are held to the exact same standard. This means that all weapons in Meister should be capable of the same physical feats. The only actual difference between weapons and Meisters is that Meisters have much more real combat experience. Because of this, we can conclude that Soul is most definitely a skilled fighter. However, in the world of Soul Eater, being a skilled fighter is the bare minimum to survive. Soul's most useful power is not physical, but instead musical. After their first encounter with Corona, Soul was infected by the Black Blood. At first, Soul fought with a demon in his mind, but after a while, they came to understanding. The demon allowed Soul the use of the Soul Piano, as well as the power of the Black Blood. Playing music on this piano allows Soul to interact with other people's souls. This music allows Maka, Black Star, and Kid to achieve Team Resonance. Team Resonance allows all members of the team to read each other's thoughts and coordinate their strategy perfectly. However, Soul can also affect his enemy's soul. When in combat with Yuriko, a chainsaw weapon, Soul was able to make him completely stop moving. Once he stopped, Maka was able to cut him in half. This particular ability is described as noise cancellation. It works by Soul sending out a wavelength that is the opposite of the opponent's soul. When the two equal forces meet, they are both cancelled out, thus making the opponent unable to move or even stand up. This ability can be used on anyone as long as they have a soul or soul essence that can be affected by the piano's music. Maka's fighting style is a mix of high-speed scythe swings, acrobatics, and martial arts. From this panel, we can see that one of the martial arts taught to the students is Judo. But then, taking a look at Black Star's fighting style, we can assume that another art that is taught at the DWMA is Ninjutsu. When we actually watch Maka fight, we can see that Maka herself uses a mixture of punches and acrobatic kicks. When Maka fights the Kishin in the anime, she manifests many different blades, much like Soul or any other weapon. And while this is not supported by canon material at all, the way she uses this is still pretty possible to actually be considered canon. We know this because of the Black Blood. 
The black blood does allow characters to form weapons from their own blood, so technically this could happen. However, the black blood only appears whenever she's resonating with Soul, but they have shown to be able to resonate over long distances. So even when separated with Soul, she could possibly do this, but still unsupported by canon. In terms of how she fights with Soul, she holds him in almost a spear grip. She actually uses both the blade and the pole equally in combat. The way she spins her scythe allows her to build up speed and momentum while not extending herself too far. One of Maka's special abilities is that she can see souls. Maka can see and gauge the power of her opponents by taking a look at the size of their soul. You see, in the world of Soul Eater, the larger the soul, the more powerful the individual. Maka's range with this ability is extremely far. When she is resonating with soul, she has been shown to be able to sense every soul on Earth. From this panel, we actually can see that she is able to view the surrounding areas of the souls from their perspective. Basically, in short, this means that she might be able to see through their eyes. Maka has far more strengths than weaknesses, but the weaknesses she does have are rather substantial. Her first major weakness is the fact that Maka can only gain access to the Black Blood armor when she and Sol are resonating. Once the two stop resonating, the Black Blood will immediately leave her body. However, the blood typically does leave her in peak condition. Another major weakness in her skills is the Adagio of the Soul. The noise cancellation thing. This noise cancellation is not able to be used against opponents who produce a noise louder than what the piano can make. The only character this has not worked against is one who they specifically say had 800 years of bloodlust built up. Soul Eater is one of those stories that has something for everyone, and just really great fight scenes. While the anime plays pretty fast and loose with the story towards the end, it still is a really good show. Personally, I liked reading the last fight in the manga, but the clips I saw of the last fight from the anime were really awesome as well. It may have had some completely non-canon things in it, but it was still really cool. While the story itself doesn't have super unique arcs for each character, the arcs that it does have are executed really well. If you haven't checked out Soul Eater, do it. It's really good, and the fights are awesome. If you've only watched the anime of Soul Eater, check out the manga, especially the last arc. It's really good. Have I mentioned the fights are cool? They are. Now this is probably the longest and the most in-depth true power video that I've done, and I can almost guarantee you that I missed at least one of Maka's abilities. So don't kill me in the comments. Just to let you know, typically when I analyze a character, I end up spending a lot of time looking for hidden and lesser known abilities. But with Maka, I was just trying not to forget them or accidentally just leave them out. But with that said guys, thanks for watching, see you next time. Remember to stay spectacular. Jojo, out.